Hi everyone, a very good afternoon to all of you present here. I'm Nitisha Jain, tax expert associated with CLEAR and my area of expertise is income tax. Today we all are here to discuss on the topic, uh, the seven tax saving ideas that will change your life. So I'll make sure that we are making the session very interactive one. So just post down all your queries in the chat box my colleague Nupar is there to answer all your questions over there. And once I'm done with the presentation part, I'll also be taking up uh, questions at the end. So before moving forward to the topic, I would be happy to tell you this, that uh, Clear Tax a FinTech company has rebranded itself as Clear to represent the whole gamut of services it is offering right now. So uh, without any further delay, let's move towards our today's agenda. So what all topics we are going to discuss in that first and foremost thing which we'll be discussing about is budget 2022 and what are the major key takeaways from this budget. Then uh, uh, many people have this confusion about the HRA component and uh, how we need we can claim HRA even by paying rent to our parents. We'll be discussing on that topic. Then gifting to your family members is covered in the section 56 in income from other sources head. We'll be discussing on that topic. Um, there are best tax saving instrument. Uh, amongst that, we are going to discuss about ELSS, then saving taxes with section ATC. Apart from the ATC also, there are many other sections. We'll be discussing on that. Then medical expenditure ATD. And what are the smart tax to increase your take home salary? So coming on to our first topic, which is the major key uh, amendments in this budget, which was passed. So while there has neither been any kind of revision in the tax rates, nor any new deduction or exemptions has been proposed, the budget proposal seek to provide clarity in many aspects, such as taxation of digital assets, ration rationalization of surcharge and long-term capital gains, which were long awaited. So on 1st February, our Union Finance Minister Srimati Nirmala Sitaramanji passed the budget 2022, stating that this budget seeks to lay the foundation and give a blueprint to steer the economy for the next 25 years. While presenting the direct tax proposals, she thanked uh, all the taxpayers of the country who have contributed immensely and uh, strengthened the hands of the government in helping the fel their fellow citizens in the hour of need. So the first major amendment which she proposed in direct taxation was filing of the updated tax return. Now, what is this? In order to provide an opportunity to some of the taxpayers who may realize that they have committed omissions or mistakes in correctly estimating their income for tax payment, a new section has been introduced to enable such taxpayers to file an updated tax return. This opportunity shall be available for a period of uh, three years from the end of the relevant financial year, subject to fulfillment of certain conditions. This will also aid in minimizing the litigation of the income tax department. This corrected return as stated above could only be filed with payment of the additional taxes, which are 25% or 50% for the uh, return filed within two years or three years from the end of the financial year respectively. So though the change given gives an opportunity to the taxpayers to correct the errors or omissions, but on the other side, it is a revenue enhancement measure for the income tax department. It should have also allowed the taxpayers to claim the additional allowances or credit for taxes, which may have been discovered subsequently. So this was about the updated tax return. Even though you are allowed to pay the tax, uh, you are allowed to file the return, but along with that, remember that you have to pay the 25 or 50 percent, up to 50 percent penalty amount also. Then, second, uh, talking about the second amendment, it was taxation of virtual digital asset. So, in the current scenario, as we know that cryptocurrencies or digital assets are into a uh, big trend. So it has been proposed to tax income from virtual digital asset at a flat tax rate of 30% without providing for any other deductions except the cost of acquisition for such asset. If you are incurring any loss from the transfer of a digital asset, that also cannot be set off against any other income. Also, the gift of a digital asset is proposed to be taxed in the hands of recipient only. So further, in order to capture the transaction details, 
tedious provisions on the transfer of such assets have also been proposed so gains from uh, transfer of any digital asset like cryptocurrencies are now taxable at 30% flat without any set off of any cost allowances and losses it is also not clear that if loss from the sale of uh, digital asset will be allowed to be set off against the gain on the sale of digital asset so this change seems to equate the gains on digital asset to gambling income and overlook the fact that it should have been taxed at normal income under the head of income from business profession or under the head of income from capital gains moreover now the world is moving towards cryptocurrencies and the proposal of the finance minister seems to discourage the in, discourage the users to invest into cryptocurrencies with holding of tax at the rate 1% by the buyer on the purchase of digital asset this is also a, a like turning point so this was all about the virtual digital asset concept if you are investing into cryptocurrencies and now you are selling uh, those digital assets then remember that you will be taxable at rate of 30% so uh, after this Com, uh, talking about the next amendment it was the tax relief to differently able people so as per the current tax law the deduction is available to the parent or guardian of the differently able person for an insurance scheme taken for such person however the deduction is available only if the lump sum payment or annuity payment is available on the death of the parent or guardian so the budget has proposed to extend the deduction for such scheme even when the payment of lump sum or annuity is provided to the differently able person during the lifetime of the parent or guardian after they attain the age of 60 years then uh, they also propose the rationalization of surcharge on long term capital gains so as per the current tax law there is difference in the uh, surcharge rates arising on long term capital gain the ltcg on the listed equity shares units etc are liable to a maximum surcharge of 15% while the other capital long term capital gains are subjected to be graded at the uh, surcharge rate which goes up to 37% now in order to address uh, the equality and everything it has been proposed that surcharge on all the long term capital gain will be capped at 15% the distinction between the listed and unlisted equity shares has been removed along with bringing all the long term capital assets within this purview of 15% uh, surcharge bracket this change is welcome one as it would increase the disposable income in the hands of taxable uh, taxpayers by a sizable amount then they have also reduced the alternate minimum tax rates and surcharge for the cooperatives and aops and uh, in order to reduce the litigation uh, a new scheme for management of litigation has been proposed wherein the superior authorities could instruct the tax officers to keep on hold the filing of appeals before the tribunal and the high court on a similar question of law pending before the high court or supreme court in case of any taxpayer so this would significantly reduce the filing of uh, frivolous or repetitive appeals by the tax officers and would significantly reduce the financial stress and burden both on the taxpayers and the government uh, now we were expecting many kind of covid amendment budgets but uh, this was not the case so they just introduced one covid related budget amendment which said which said that payment received from employer by the employee or his survivors or from any other person up to an aggregate limit of rupees 10 lakh for the treatment of covid 19 expenditure has been exempt from taxes so this is expected to give a significant uh, breather to the taxpayers who have already gone through pain especially during the second wave of covid 19 and uh, uh, they had also provided some tedious provisions for the benefits or perquisites paid to the business or professionals so it has been proposed that any person who is responsible for providing any benefit or perquisites to a resident arising from business or profession carried out by such resident shall deduct a tds at the rate of 10% on the value of such benefit if that value uh, of such benefit exceeds rupees 20000 so this was the case and uh, at last they had also the health and education says are not to be allowed as business expenditure so this was all about the key uh budget amendments you can uh, you have to consider it and accordingly just 
just think about the digital asset things, cryptocurrencies, long-term capital gain, surcharge rates, and everything. So moving on to our next topic, which is HRA. So talking, if we talk about HRA thing, house rent allowances and income tax, it is the component of salary which is received towards the rent payment and is allowed as deduction from your taxable income. Now there is uh, one common myth that uh, some people are having that whatever rent amount I'm paying, that will be wholly allowed as HRA exemption. But this is not the case. Income tax provision provides three conditions. First one is actual HRA, which is received by the employee. Second is 40% of the HRA for non-metro, 40% of your salary for the non-metro city or 50% of the salary for uh, metro cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata and Chennai. And the third condition is actual rent paid less 10% of the salary. So as per the provision, whatever will be the least amount from these three conditions will be allowed as your HRA exemption and not the entire rent which you are paying will be allowed as HRA exemption. So <clears throat> this is the case. Uh, it is the most common allowances which is received by the salaried person. Those who live on rent can maximize on saving the taxes by claiming the HRA deduction from salary. So are you unsure about how you can claim HRA if you live with your parents? Then those who live with their parents can pay rent to their parents and then also they can save tax. How it can be done? For that, you can pay rent to your parents if you are staying with your parents. This should be done by transferring the money to their bank account or pay via check. This way you will be able to claim your HRA deduction properly. Now, since rent is paid to the owners, the property must be owned by your parents only. It may be owned by uh, one or both of the parent. So you can deposit the money to any one of your parent in case of joint house ownership or to the parent who is the legal owner of the house. Remember that you cannot be the owner or co-owner of this property since you cannot claim tax exemption on the rent paid to yourself. Now, uh, there will be some documents which are required to claim the HRA if you are staying with your parents. So for that, first one will be the rent agreement and rent receipts. Usually, employers ask for the copy of the rental agreement for their records. They can also request uh, submission of the rent receipts to allow your HRA exemption. You can enter into simple rent agreement with your parents or you can also prepare the rent receipts by using the clear tax rent receipt generator. Uh, you can print this receipts and submit to your HR or payroll department. But it is important to keep all the records with you in case if you get the notice in future. So you have to submit all the documents to the assessing officer. Now, whatever rent you are, uh, which is paid by you to your parents will be taxable for them. The rental income which is paid by you is to be reported under the head income from house property in your parents income tax return. However, they can claim property taxes paid by them and they can also claim the 30% standard deduction from this rental income. So if you are not able to submit the rent receipts in time to your employer and your employer deducts TDS on HRA, you are still covered uh, under the HRA exemptions can be claimed even at the time of filing your income tax return. So if you forgot to submit the rent receipts to your employer and they have not included the HRA exemption, but still, if you are having the rent receipts, then too, at the time of your return filing, you can include all the uh, all those HRA exemption. After making the proper calculation, you can include the HRA exemption amount and reduce it from your total taxable salary income. So this is all about the HRA uh, thing. Now moving on to our next topic, which is gifting taxes to your family members. So. Uh, we live in India, which have lots of reason to celebrate owing to its diversified culture, customs and religions. Numerous occasions arise where gifts are exchanged. However, many times gifts can also be part of tax planning or tax evasion. While tax planning is done within the framework of law, it is permissible. But tax evasion is prohibited and can be penalized. But little did you know that these gifts are taxable after a certain limit and uh, one needs to pay the income taxes on the gift received to them. So as per the income tax law, gifts received by any person or persons are taxed in the hands of the recipient under the head income from other sources at the normal tax rates. 
if an individual is uh, receiving gift from relative that will not be taxable for the donee here donee means the recipient of gift but income from such gift may be taxable in some cases uh, say for example deemed owner concept in house property or clubbing provisions etc so you can give an amount up to rupees 50000 to a family member without it being taxed but if you are if you are receiving any gift from any person uh, on occasion of marriage of an individual or if any person is gifting uh, to any person under a will or by way of inheritance then no tax will be levyable but there is excessive tax planning in india using gift provision which apparently fall under the scrutiny of the tax department especially if it is in huge quantity so it is important to maintain the documents to establish the genuineness of the gift which you are receiving you can avoid gift tax by uh, learning more about the gift tax laws in india but the best way to avoid gift tax is by avoiding to receive any gift in form of cash property etc aggregating more than rupees 50000 you have to pay taxes on the money which is gifted to you as the receiver will have to bear the taxes applicable on them if it is exceeding 50000 rupees so this is all about the gift uh, concept so plan accordingly if you are receiving any gift it should not be above 50000 because above that it will be taxable now talking about how you can save your taxes using elss so with such a long list of options choosing the right investment it can be a daunting task uh, so the aim of any tax saving investment is not only to load lower the tax payable but also to save for the future and create a corpus of emergency funds now you could only invest in traditional section atc approved investment like lic and ppf and make do with that but if you want to grow your wealth you have to invest in tool that promise you high returns long term so elss funds have been the most preferred option in recent years for the following reasons uh, it provides it offers the tax deduction up to rupees 150000 under atc first is this one second these funds offer the triple e benefit tax exemption wealth accumulation and zero exit load then the third uh, benefit in if if you are investing in elss will be that these funds will invest primarily in the equity market in the diversified manner which gives investors a good opportunity to earn the inflating uh, inflation beating returns so of all the investment options available under atc elss funds offer the lowest lock in period of only 3 years also these funds do not have the limit on the investable amount so once the lock in period is completed investor can choose to liquidate the investment or stay invested based on the fund performance so uh, this is how you can invest it into elss but you should if you want to know more about elss what you need to know before you are investing it first thing that you may invest any amount in elss but it is the only contribution of up to rupees 150000 will be allowed as tax exempt then it is one of the best tax saving options uh, that offer tax benefits with potentially higher returns and short lock in periods dividend the return or dividend on the clss is also great then you can continue to invest in this scheme even after the completion of the lock in period of 3 years the risk involved uh, with the clss is higher when compared to fixed deposit or ppf but the returns are potentially higher as well so where the risk factor is high obviously returns will also be high so accordingly uh, as per your investments uh, as per your funds as per your risk uh, appetite that how much risk you can avail make your decision and in, you can invest in elss now uh, talking about the major atc section which every which most of the people avail we'll talk about this so in this a uh, life insurance premium if you are having a life insurance premium then uh, this will not just it is not just a premium thing but it is it will also provide you the tax exemption for securing a uh, family or future everybody takes life insurance premium so if you are investing the amount into this then 1.5 lakh is the benefit amount under atc you can include the life insurance premium which is paid by you in under section atc then if you have any kind of ulip plan if you are in looking for long term investment plan 
then for that case in that case unit linked insurance plan is a good tax saving instrument it offers insurance uh, to your investment your premium is invested in the debt and equity market offering you the tax free returns <clears throat> so you can expect a good result from the ulip only if you invest for 10 to 12 years then uh, if you are investing into ppf so ppf is also most preferred option for the tax benefit under atc section this long term saving scheme has lock in period of 15 years <clears throat> 1 5 15 years and can be extended to block of 5 years so according to the new budget the annual investment limit has been increased to 1.5 lakh um, you can invest into this and apart from these there are other atc investments like you can invest into sukanya samriddhi yojana you can avail the uh, deduction of home loan principal repayment under atc if you are having uh, tuition fees if you are paying children's tuition fees then that tuition fee amount will also form part of atc so accordingly uh, you can invest the amounts under atc various plans and uh, utilize the maximum deduction which is 1.5 lakh under this section apart from atc also uh, go talking about beyond atc you can avail if you are having any kind of medical insurance premium then you can avail the benefit under section add so if your age is up to 60 years then you, uh, for yourself your family or spouse you can avail maximum deduction up to rupees 25000 under atd section but if you have taken medical insurance policy for a senior citizen parents then in that case you can uh, get the benefit or maximum deduction up to rupees 50000 but in case if you are not having any medical insurance policy for a senior citizen parents but you are incurring medical expenditure on their behalf then in that case also you are eligible to take the benefit up to rupees 50000 so this is about the health insurance premium thing then uh, if you are contributing uh, into nps so in next upcoming slide i am going to discuss in detail about the nps thing but yeah apart from uh, this nps if uh, uh, yes so it double d talks about the medical treatment for the handicap dependent in case if the disability is 40% or more but it is less than 80% then you are going to get a flat deduction up to rupees 75000 but if the disability is 80% or more then you you will be getting flat deduction up to rupees 125000 say suppose you are incurring the medical expenditure on yourself or your dependent for the Uh, specific disease which are specified under section 80 double db so in that case lower of the amounts will become exempt so if your age is below 60 years or up to 60 years then 40000 rupees or the actual amount which you have incurred so whatever will be the lower amount will be allowed as exempt uh, exemption under 80 double db and if you are senior citizen your age is above 60 years then in that case you are going to get the deduction up to rupees 1 lakh or the actual amount which you have paid whatever will be the lower amount will be allowed as your uh, expenditure of uh, the deduction amount then in case if you yourself are suffering from any kind of disability then in that case if you have physical disability like uh, blindness including blindness or mental retardation then you are going to get a flat deduction up to rupees 75000 and in case of severe disability your deduction amount will get increased to flat 125000 in case if you have uh, educational loan uh, taken then uh, so it will not only help you to provide help in the indian studies but also if you have taken a loan for your foreign studies so it will also help you to save your taxes if you have taken an education loan and you are repaying the same then the interest paid on that educational loan is will be allowed as deduction from your total income under section 80a this deduction is provided only for the interest part of the uh, emi so i repeat there is no tax benefit for the principal part of the emi only the interest part will be allowed as the deduction so there is uh, but the good thing also in this section is that there is no limit on the maximum amount that is allowed as deduction whatever amount will be your interest part that entire amount you can claim it as your deduction under at it is available only for 8 years starting from the year in which you start repaying the loan 
or until the interest is fully repaid whichever is earlier it should also be noted that if your loan tenure exceeds 8 years then you cannot claim a deduction for the interest paid beyond 8 years so it is always advisable that if you have taken an educational loan try to repay it within 80 within 8 years so that you can avail the ate benefit and uh, now talking about the npa section so you can claim if you think that you have invested entire amount under section 1. Point, under section atc up to rupees 1.5 lakh and you still want to contribute more and if you are also concerned about your retirement and are looking forward to plan with tax saving benefits then nps is the best tax saving instrument national pension scheme is known as its investor friendly features low cost structure and flexibility so here in this you can invest minimum amount of rupees 6000 in installments or at least rupees 500 as lump sum so being the investor you get to decide how to allocate your money for investments in uh, gilts corporate bonds and equity in the section under section 80 ccd 1b you can claim any additional self contribution up to rupees 50000 so as you can see in this comparison table uh, there are two accounts nps tier 1 account and nps tier 2 so tier 1 will be the default account and if you want then tier 2 account you can open this is voluntarily withdrawals from this tier 1 account is not permitted but from tier 2 it is permitted tax exemption from tier 1 account will be restricted up to rupees 2 lakh per annum so under atc you can claim up to 1.5 lakh and under atc cd 1b you can claim up to extra 50000 rupees so all together from these two section you can claim 2 lakh rupees of deduction and under tier 2 1.5 lakh will be allowed for government employees or other employees for other employees it is none then minimum nps contribution in tier 1 will be rupees 500 or 500 or 1000 rupees per annum and in tier 2 it will be rupees 250 there is no limit of maximum contra- nps contribution under both the accounts either in tier 1 or tier 2 it is up to you how you have to invest how much you have to invest maximum contribution depends totally on the individual there is no limit by the income tax department so this was all about the tax saving avenues under section adc apart from adc also we saw we talked about nps uh, how much you can invest what are its benefits then uh, apart from adc and nps there are other tax saving avenues also which we talked about atd which is health insurance premium then educational loan uh, all the physical disability section and if you have contrib if you have donated any amount to any kind of charitable organizations or anything then in, in that case atg will come into picture so this uh, this were all about the tax saving uh, deductions which you can avail now there are some smart hacks also to increase your take home salary <clears throat> so in that case uh, first one as we discussed in the earlier slides were about the hra so you can claim any deduction uh from it will be reduced from your income from salary the house rent allowance component then leave travel allowances so as i told that submit your rental receipts to your employer and avail the deduction then uh, if you have traveled across the country anywhere and uh, uh, you are getting the leave travel allowance from your employer then it is your responsibility to submit the uh, this fair receipts to your employer and you can avail the leave travel allowance concession and reduce your taxable income and pay less amount of taxes then as you can see in your form 16 uh, there are always standard deduction up to rupees 50000 and professional tax these uh, these components are also been reduced from your salary so this will also help you to increase your take home salary as i told about the hra conditions whatever will be the least um, uh, least from least amount from the three conditions will be allowed as your hr exemption uh, actual hr received then 40% of the salary for non metro city or 50% for the metro cities then third condition is actual rent paid less 10% of the salary so there is a hra calculator also present in google uh, nupur will provide the link in the chat box you can use that calculator you don't have to do any kind of manual calculations if you have not submitted your rental receipts to your employer 
so at the time of your return filing also you can just use that calculator include the amounts in the respective column and you will be able to calculate the hra exemption correctly by yourself only then as we discussed about uh, the chapter 6a deductions so 1.5 lakh talks about adc additional deduction of 250000 under nps scheme then deduction up to 75000 under atd 50000 for senior citizen 25000 for yourself and your family then uh, uh, talking about the home loan component so yes if you have taken any home loan housing loan so it will be comprising of two parts interest component and uh, principal repayment so the interest component will form part of income from house property head under section 24 up to rupees 2 lakh so uh, 2 lakh will be reduced from your total income and it will fall under income from house property and up to 1.5 lakh of principal repayment component you can include it under income uh, under section atc so this is also a great thing uh, which will help you to increase your take home salary and uh, if work on a cdc and request your employer they uh, to deposit the amount to your nps account they can also deposit the amount in nps <clears throat> so for that atccd2 section will come into picture and then if you are opting for any kind of reimbursement say uh, telephone bills or broadband bills etc then those are also eligible to get reduced from your total income from salary just reduce that uh, expenditures or allowances which you have received from your employer and then come on the total taxable income from your salary so if you have any kind of epf contribution the that will also form part of adc and epf contributions will be reduced by your employer every month from your salary and accordingly dds will be deducted then uh, uh just declare your tax saving in uh, investment declarations to your employer on time so that your tds amount your monthly tax which has been deducted from your salary slip uh, from your total income which will be reduced less by your employer because you have deposited or uh, sorry which you have declared your investments on time then housing loan deduction uh, interest payment will be forming part up to maximum 2 lakh rupees and principal repayment will fall under atc and if you want all the uh, calculations to be easy then you can use our hra calculator then rent receipt generator calculator also there are now new regime versus old regime so if you are confused about these two and if you want to calculate that which regime will be useful for you how much tax amount i'll have to pay how much tax i'll be liable for in the old regime or new regime if you want comparison of all these things then Uh, there is a clear tax income tax calculator also on google again the link will be provided in the chat box you can use all these links and make your calculation very easy for your income tax calculation purposes just avail these and if you have uh, so these were all about our today's session these were all the topics i hope everything uh, about the topics were clear to you so now most of the questions would have been answered by nupur but uh, now i'll also be taking up some questions uh surya teja tax investments come with lock in some of the tax investments come with lock in and some not so can you please brief that what are you particularly asking about Uh, are there any questions more
i think there are no more questions so we are good to wind up the session thank you all for joining and if you have any uh, doubts after the session also you can write to us at support at the rightly attacks dot in our support team is there they'll help you to answer your queries in the mailbox so thank you so much for everyone for joining